This envelope has 15 cards and on each card there is a tip, a fun fact or a secret about Dexcom G7. I'm gonna reveal all of them in this video. Although I've used Dexcom G7 for almost a year now and I've been quite happy with it, there were a few things that I didn't like that much. I was losing the sensor signal, my glucose graph was a bit spotty at times and the sensor adhesive was peeling off a bit too early. So I started doing research, I connected with Dexcom G7 educators, I even visited visited the Dexcom product team in San Diego and after a couple months of hard work I ended up with a list of 15 tips and secrets. So let's have a look at them. Starting with tip number 15. How to get rid of signal loss issue. Signal loss was something a number of you asked me about and here is the deal. Each Dexcom sensor has a built-in antenna which is sending the signal to your phone or to your reader. The antenna on the G7 is positioned differently compared to the G6 because the G7 sensor sensor is a lower profile sensor. The G7 antenna is closer to your body and your body can block the signal. And I don't really have a great solution to this but I want to give you a few pointers. To avoid signal loss you should always keep the distance between the sensor and your phone within 20 feet or 6 meters. And if possible keep these two bad boys in one line of sight. Don't put your body in between them. Don't put the sensor here and your phone here because then your body can be blocking the signal. Another thing you want to do is keep your phone charged because when the battery level on your phone drops below 20% most phones switch to low power mode and this will turn off Bluetooth and cause the signal loss. Dexcom is aware of the signal loss problem and we can be sure that they are working on some improvements as we speak. Secret number 14 how to add a Dexcom G7 widget on your phone screen. The Dexcom G7 widget lets you see your glucose numbers on your lock screen or home screen without opening the app. To add the Dexcom G7 widget on your home screen, touch and hold an empty area. Then tap the add button in the upper left corner, select the Dexcom widget, add widget and tap done. Here is how it looks on the home screen and you can add this on the lock screen as well. I'm an iPhone guy so I don't know how to do it on Android but I'm sure you can Google it. Secret number 13. Another question many of you were asking. Why is the G7 glucose graph so spotty? The individual spots in the G7 glucose graph will jump up and down quite quickly and overall the G7 graph looks a lot more jittery compared to a G6 graph. When I was wearing the G6 and the G7 at the same time and playing the glucose graphs next to each other you can see that the G6 glucose graph is a lot more stable. Here is one thing I noticed and this might be interesting to you. The G7 graph was way more stable when I placed it somewhere where I have more fat like the back of my upper arm or my abdomen. When I have the sensor in a more muscular area the readings tend to be more jittery. One of the reasons why the jumps in the graph happen is that the G7 is trying to be more real time than the G6 and that requires the G7 system to work with projections into the future. This screenshot is taken at the exact same time and you see that the G7 sees that my glucose is starting to drop and it's already one step ahead of the G6. And here is another example where G7 is one step ahead of the G6. By the way these projections into the future are not always easy to do, especially when we suddenly and rapidly change what we are doing. One more example, here I took a 10 minute walk around 10 p.m. My blood sugar always goes down when I walk. You see the G7 graph drops much faster than the G6 graph. I think it's because the G7 is expecting the drop to continue. In this case the trend didn't continue because I stopped walking and the G7 jumped back up. And I know this can get confusing but the general tip I would give is not to make a rapid decision, medical decision just based on one or two dots in the graph. I personally try not to do that especially if I just did some physical activity or ate some fast carbohydrates. I always look at the trend in the last 15 minutes, I look at the trend arrow and I pay attention to how I feel. Whenever I feel that my body is telling me something different than what Dexcom is telling me, I always check my blood sugar with an old school blood sugar meter. And that's why it doesn't really bother me that much that the G7 is more jittery at times. Next secret, number 12. What is the best Dexcom G7 site? 
Well, first of all, if you're in the US, you should know that the only FDA approved G7 site is the back of your upper arm and upper buttocks for children between two and six years of age. If you're in Europe, then you can also go for abdomen, which is a CE marked site and can be officially used in all European countries. Out of these sites, I really like the fatty area on the back of my arm the best. I don't like the outside of the arm that much because it's more muscular. It can get a bit painful and I tend to sleep on the sensor when I place it there, which leads to compression lows. I still do get those with the G7. Having said that, I've seen people placing their G7 sensors on their lower back, on their chest, on their thigh, on their calf, or even on their forearm. It seems to work for them, but I can't guarantee the results because I haven't tested those sites yet. But I'm thinking of another video where I would try and test various Dexcom G7 sites. So let me know which alternative sites for Dexcom G7 you would like me to try and test. Moving on to next secret, number 11. How to avoid the gap in the graph between sensor sessions. Well, this secret is well hidden, but you can do it. You no longer have to fly blind. Here is exactly what you need to do. Here is my old Dexcom G7 sensor. I've been using it for 10 days. The grace period on it already started and I still have about 10 hours left. Let me mark up the old sensor number one and now I will apply a new G7 sensor on the other arm and mark it as sensor number two. And I'm marking them up so that I don't confuse the old sensor number one with the new sensor number two later on. As soon as I applied the new sensor number two, the 30 minute warm up period on it started. And in the meantime, I keep receiving the glucose readings from the old sensor, sensor number one. I waited exactly 30 minutes and so now I can be sure that the new sensor is ready to be used. So I'm gonna go ahead and click replace sensor in the G7 app, start new sensor and I will enter the pairing code of the new sensor. And voila, I'm receiving the readings from the new sensor now and there is no gap in the graph. At this point I can remove the old sensor completely. You could see that when I switched from the old sensor to the new one, the new sensor was showing quite a bit higher readings than the first one. I'm wondering which one was accurate at that point. And that leads me to my next tip, my next secret. Tip number 10. What to do when your G7 readings are off? Well, there are multiple things you can do. If the readings are off during the first several hours after application, a very easy fix is pre-soaking your sensor. Here is what it means. Clinical studies show that all continuous glucose monitors tend to be less accurate during the first 12 hours after application. This happens because whenever you apply a foreign object under the skin, your body needs to get used to it. And during this time, the readings can be off. What I do to improve accuracy during this time is that I apply my new G7 sensor at the exact point when the grace period on the old sensor starts, just like I showed you a minute ago. And I let the new sensor sit there not only for 30 minutes, but for six, eight or even 12 hours. Only when the grace period on the old sensor ends, I will switch to the new sensor. Whenever I allow the initial six to 12 hours for the new sensor to settle, it provides me with way more accurate readings right from the beginning. By the way, this, just like many other tips in this video, is not something that's written in the user guide. It's just another practical tip that really took my experience with Dexcom G7 to the next level. Now, if your Dexcom G7 readings are off, not your during the first several hours, but later on in the cycle, there is a different strategy of what you can do. And that's calibrating your sensor to your blood sugar reading from your finger prick. Just click the plus button, add your current blood glucose and select to use it as a calibration. Before you calibrate your G7, please keep in mind that if you calibrate well, you will make things better. But if you calibrate wrong, you will make things worse. Here are a few rules for successful calibration that I use. Number one, please Please keep in mind that any blood sugar meter can be off by plus minus 20%. So don't calibrate when the difference between the sensor and your blood glucose meter from the finger prick is less than plus minus 20%. This table from Dexcom shows the acceptable range of sensor readings. If you are within this range, you probably don't need to calibrate. Number two, when you decide to calibrate, make sure that that finger prick and that reading from the finger prick is as accurate as it can get. Wash your hands with soap, dry them with a clean towel, double check that your test strips are not expired and get a new lancet. Number three, 
I only calibrate my Dexcom during periods when my blood glucose is stable and when the arrow is pointing horizontally to the right. I know that when my blood glucose level is changing quickly, it's going up and down quickly, I will never be able to calibrate well. And number four, I don't calibrate after I just ate, took insulin, exercised. All the activities I just mentioned can change blood glucose levels very quickly and that's why calibration during the time when you are doing these activities might not be very effective. Moving on to secret number nine. What should I do when my Dexcom G7 applicator is stuck? Has this ever happened to you? You cleaned your skin with alcohol, unscrewed the cap of the G7 applicator, placed the applicator over the arm, you're trying to press the white button on the applicator and nothing happens. It happened to me with my second or maybe third sensor. The sensor just wouldn't come out. And I was thinking, what's this? This must be a faulty sensor, it just won't come out. I'm pressing the white button like crazy and nothing is happening. So I tried it with another applicator. Unscrewed the cap, placed the applicator over my arm. I'm trying to press the button again and nothing. The second sensor doesn't work either. And I'm like, what the heck is happening? So I go back to the user manual, I read through the instructions and I realize I'm actually doing this wrong. You always have to push the applicator against the skin before you press the button. Only when you push and press, the sensor will get applied. I think the reason why I forgot to push was that I used a bunch of Freestyle Libre sensors and they have a similar application mechanism where you don't have to push against your skin. <laughs> How embarrassing. Let's move on to the next one. Secret number eight. How to protect the Dexcom G7 sensor from peeling off. Well, this one is a challenge, especially now in summer when everything gets sweaty, I'm in and out of water, the sensor can peel off and I don't even notice it. So I really do pay close attention to skin preparation. I always use a couple alcohol wipes to clean the skin really well and let it completely dry off. After applying the sensor, I will go around multiple times and push on the sensor for at least 10 seconds. But what makes the most difference for me are these simple overpatches. What I like about them is not only that they are really strong, they are also transparent they don't take away from the elegant design of the G7. These patches are called LexCam, available not only for Dexcom G7, but also for Dexcom G6 and Freestyle Libre. If you want to try them out, then check out the link below and don't forget to use code TYPE1TALKS to get 10% off. Secret number seven, what are my favorite Dexcom G7 alerts? I already told you in my previous videos that I'm very excited about the G7 alerts. The G7 is just way more more customizable than any other CGM on the market. I don't want to bother you with a long list of all the alerts, but I want to give you three functions that I really like to use that I think are not so widely used. That might be helpful for you. First one is silencing my alerts. When you enable this, you will have total silence for up to six hours. You won't hear any sounds. You won't feel any vibrations. You will enter this beautiful relaxed state where no device is screaming at you that your glucose is too high or that you lost the signal. You can enjoy this peaceful place for six hours and focus solely on your mental health. Brought to you by Dexcom. <laughs> Now let's get serious again. The second alert feature that I like to use is glucose rising fast. What is cool about this alert is that on the G7, you can further customize it compared to the G6. It's possible to get this alert only when your glucose is above certain customizable threshold. I personally use 140 milligrams per deciliter. And that's great because when I'm at 140 or above, and I'm rising fast, I usually need to take an action. On the other hand, I typically don't need an action when I'm at 90 and rising fast, because it's usually because I just corrected a hypo. The third alert I absolutely love is the exact opposite of the second one, glucose dropping fast. It's possible to get this one only when my glucose is below certain customizable threshold. I personally use 130 milligrams per deciliter. The reason why I use 130 because only when I'm below 130 and dropping fast, I need to take an action. On the other hand, I typically don't need an action when I'm at 250 or 200 and dropping fast because what usually happens at that time is I just corrected very high blood sugar with insulin and I'm actually trying to go down rather fast. 
so I'm not concerned when I'm dropping fast at around 200 or 250 level. Secret number six, which will no longer be a secret once this video is released. Why I started using the G7 receiver. Look, I've always been a big fan of Dexcom readings on my phone, but the main reason why I started liking the receiver is that it's like half the size and half the weight of my phone. I can easily put it in the pocket of my shorts. The battery on the receiver lasts a lot longer than my phone battery and I don't need to charge it so often. I charge it once in five to six days. Plus it's really user friendly and it has the clarity data included in it. I never really used the receiver that much but that's actually starting to change because as I'm growing older I appreciate the time without my phone a lot more. So if you feel the same way, give the receiver a shot. Secret number five. Well, this one is more of a fun fact. Do you know why the G7 is gray? This one is so interesting and I didn't give a lot of thoughts into why the G7 has a different color than the G6 and why it has a different color than Freestyle Libre 3 for example. But when I was talking to the Dexcom product team in San Diego, they told me that they had a very good reason to choose this exact color and this exact shade of gray. This color proved to be the color that best blends with all human skin tones. And it really does. When you look at the sensor placed on your skin from a distance of several meters, you really almost can't see the sensor. When I learned about this, I thought it was very interesting. And I'm kind of curious if we ever see more colors in the CGM space, if we will ever wear blue, red or yellow CGMs. Would you like to have that? Secret number four, when will Dexcom G7 glucose data go direct to watch? This has been talked about for the longest time, but finally during the ADA conference in San Diego, the Dexcom's CEO made a clear statement. Direct to watch will be available this year. So by the end of 2023, Dexcom readings will go direct to three devices, a phone, your watch, and your insulin pump or your receiver. Moving on to secret number three. Will Dexcom G7 wear time be extended to 15 days? What do you think? This is another thing that's been talked about a lot and we have some updates and developments in this area as well. The Dexcom CEO indicated that Dexcom will be coming out with a 15 day sensor. So a sensor that has one more extra day compared to Freestyle Libre. Isn't that funny? The new sensor will be for people with diabetes who don't use insulin and for people with pre-diabetes. And I know that most of you watching this channel are insulin dependent diabetics. Unfortunately, we will have to stick to a 10 day Dexcom sensor for now. And the reason why Dexcom G7 doesn't increase the lifetime to 15 days is that for this group of users who are insulin dependent, Dexcom is really focusing on reliability and they don't want to compromise on it. And I think it makes sense because I'm running an automated insulin delivery system and I really need very precise data for the whole sensor lifetime. I'm willing to compromise on the 10 day wear time compared to 15 days if it means 100% reliable data for the whole time of the sensor because that's really the number one thing I need. Secret number two how to get Dexcom G7 covered by insurance. Since Dexcom G7 is quite new, it is not so widely covered as the Dexcom G6, which you might have realized already. If you're in the US, for example, the Dexcom G7 is covered by Medicare for all type one and type two diabetics who use insulin or have certain low blood sugar events. But what can happen is that your insurance covers G6 and hasn't added the G7 yet. My friend, Crystal talked about it on her Diabetes Strong YouTube channel. When that happens, what you can do is go to participating pharmacy and get your G7 prescription filled for $89 a month, which is not too bad. Secret number one, when will the Dexcom G7 integrate with insulin pumps? Right now in July, 2023, you can only integrate with DYI loop solutions. You cannot integrate with any commercial pumps just yet. Tandem and Insulin Insulet are currently working on integration of their Control IQ and Omnipod 5 system with the G7. If I got that right from their press releases and public statements, these should be coming in the second half of 2023 in case of Tandem and early in 2024 in case of Insulet. But I can't guarantee that. They need to do the work. Guys, if you want to get the most out of your Dexcom G7, don't ignore this video where I review the G7 sensor in detail and focus on all key features. I will see you there. Ciao.